if you say, all right, so have you, do you know what these functions look like? Like sine, cosine, all that stuff? Yeah, for the most part, we did it in like September in my pre-cal class, but um, I know that cosine starts not at the origin, but I'm not sure on the exact. Sure. Like, so like, it doesn't matter so much about the, like where it starts and the details doesn't matter a ton, but bottom line is your sine and cosine functions. Okay, one is going to be like this, okay, and one is going to be like this, okay. So what's going on? When when we take, all right, when we, the, the way you distinguish between the two, it's not really relevant for this question, but would you, what's cosine of zero? Do you remember that? Um... If I drew out the unit circle, I could. It's zero. So, so sine of zero is zero, okay? So sine of zero is zero. That's how we know this green function here, sine of x, all right? The orange one, cosine of zero is actually one. That's how we know that cosine of x. We know that, so that means this value is 1, this value is negative 1. These are the values it goes between, right? Um, pretend I, you know, got it, well, down here actually would be negative 1, all right? So, what is, do you remember what amplitude, what amplitude means? Height. Yeah, exactly. So, both of these functions have a height of what? 1. Yes. All right. So sine of x and cosine of x have a height, uh, have an amplitude of one, all right? Tangent of x is like a crazy function. We don't care, so tangent of x is kind of like not really something we're even considering. But, but when we're, so, so because tangent of x, if you remember like that function, something like this, like it's like these really weird things like this, okay? Mm -hmm. um, its amplitude is infinite so what we're so we can get rid of let's see what is the one that uses tangent of x that's that's b all right so now what we're really narrowing it down to we're trying to think of what like how how do you remember in the transformation section how do we vertically stretch a function because basically what we're doing is we need to stretch this function so that we now have we've, we take our amplitude from one to two. So basically what we need to do is we need to get it like this. It doesn't matter for sine or cosine, it doesn't matter. Where we need to get it like this as opposed to whatever it was before where it's like, you know what I mean? Oops. Yeah. Okay, so how do we do, what's it, how do we vertically stretch something? Is it when you else multiply you it? Yes. So, so what are you, so what are we multiplying? Are we multiplying the x value? Like, are we multiplying the x by like 2? Or are we multiplying the entire function by 2? Um, the entire function yes and I think. That, and, no that's right okay and I'll, and I'll prove it to you all right so think about it like this if the biggest at this point that sine of x will get is one right because that's the, that's the largest y value currently if we multiply that by two we've now gone from one to two right so now we've basically jumped up by value of two, and that's gonna increase the amp the amplitude. And likewise, if the the smallest we get is negative one, right? Negative one over here. Now, if we multiply that by two, we're gonna get down to negative two. So even if you don't, again, this is the same instance where you don't even if you don't remember the transformation rule specifically that hey, we multiply it by a constant, and we're gonna get a vertical stretch. It doesn't matter. You, you just you can basically reason it through and be like, well, what's going to happen if I multiply this whole function by two? All right. Mm -hmm. So now we know that we've got to we, we've got to multiply this function. Now we got to see like 
it, again, if it's two sine of x or two cosine of x, it doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna get a nice amplitude of two. So what's which one of the options that they presented us is gonna work? So it would be the first one then. Yeah, two sine two of x. Sine x. 